HBO Max, where they're getting a rebrand. And let's just say mm, it's not going over well with a lot of folks. Before we get into the reaction, here's what they're doing. HBO Max will soon just be called Max. Now, Warner Media merged with Discovery last year to form Warner Brothers Discovery. So now it'll be HBO, HGTV, Food Network, Cartoon Network, and TLC all under one umbrella. Now, people are split on this change. There are people upset about removing the iconic HBO name. There are others already planning to cancel their subscription. And then there are the streamers who think this is simply a brilliant idea. It is scheduled to maintain HBO Max's current price of almost 16 bucks a month and launches on May 23rd.
Here's your Money Briefing for Wednesday, April 12th. I'm J.R. Wellen for The Wall Street Journal. Your credit card bill likely has a recurring charge from a subscription you might have forgotten you even had. Now more Americans are taking a closer look at those charges and canceling their subscriptions. Wall Street Journal reporter Rachel Wolf joins us with more. Hey, Rachel, thanks for being with us. Thanks so much for having me on. So, Rachel, why have people built up so many subscriptions? We really reached peak subscription during the pandemic when everybody was at home. Think streaming, think boxes of stuff delivered to your door. So the number of new subscriptions per user peaked in the third quarter of 2022. That means streaming services, digital memberships, food of the month clubs, et cetera, et cetera. Since then, cancellations are actually outpacing new subscriptions, according to financial planning app Rocket Money. So in other words, we've really reached peak subscription and now we're coming down off of a high. So what's caused people to take a closer look at the money they're spending on subscriptions? Household budgets are getting a lot tighter. We have inflation, other economic uncertainties like a cooling job market. I spoke to one man in Ohio who's canceling subscriptions to all sorts of things to free up money for groceries so that he doesn't have to penny pinch at the grocery store by cutting satellite radio, magazines he never read, and going to restaurants instead of paying for a pricey membership to a country club. He found that he's not actually having to cut back that much in other areas. So about a third of people who responded to a Credit Karma survey said that their biggest financial mistake last year was paying for services they never used, which I know I can relate to, but cancellations for premium streaming services in the U.S., which includes Netflix, Hulu, and HBO Max, were up 49% in 2022 from the previous year, according to subscriber measurement company Antenna. You know, a lot of us have recurring monthly fees we pay for various services. Why is it so easy for us to lose track of what we're paying for? So a lot of people have their subscriptions sent to auto payment where they just have a little bit of money coming out of their accounts between going to get coffee or a donut, going out for drinks. Streaming service will just slip right in. But now people are really taking a closer look at their monthly spending and they're realizing they're paying about $133 more than they thought they were. So people estimated they were paying only $86 a month for various subscriptions. Really, they're paying over $200 a month. Wow. And these subscription charges are just another in the list of expenses that people have to contend with. Are there services or tools that can help them manage these recurring payments? So there are a few different subscription management apps. I spoke to the co-founder of one called ScribeUp. That's a newer service and they do something unusual where they give users a digital credit card to use only for recurring payments. So you get a credit card number that you fill in for say HelloFresh meal subscriptions. And what ScribeUp will do is automatically cancel the subscription after a free trial instead of waiting to see whether or not you remember. The same service found that over 50% of people had forgotten to cancel a free trial. So knowing that they wait for people to say that they want to continue rather than assuming that they'll remember. You know, Rachel, it should be easy enough for people to cancel subscriptions, but some companies make it difficult for consumers to do that. So I spoke to one consumer who didn't realize she was paying for ClassPass for about five years without really ever using it. And so she ended up spending over $5,000 on the subscription that she never used. She said she wasn't able to get the money back when she reached out to them, which she was very disappointed by. And she expected ClassPass to let her know that they were going to keep charging her rather than just assuming that she would remember to cancel. So I was able to get a comment from ClassPass and ClassPass said that when members sign up, they're notified that their memberships automatically renew on the same day each month. And they added that ClassPass does send reminders when members have not used their accounts to book classes. But a new proposal from the Federal Trade Commission could make it even simpler to break up with your subscriptions. The Consumer Watchdog actually wants to require merchants to allow for online cancellation and to get consent before presenting customers with for retention offers. Wow, but still, that's $5,000 that consumer racked up. Are they able to get that money back? Unfortunately not. Well, no doubt some consumers have a negative feeling about subscriptions and the recurring charges. What are companies doing to get ahead of that 
that would reflect the negative sentiment. Some companies are shifting their business model to meet changing consumer feelings about subscriptions. BarkBox, which provides a monthly package of dog treats and toys, is one of them. The company recently laid off 12% of its staff and said it would invest more in non-subscription products, including treats and other consumables, after weaker-than-predicted earnings. HelloFresh, a grocery delivery service, also expects its number of active customers to decline in the first half of 2023, after dropping to 7.1 million in the fourth quarter of 2022 from 8 million in the third quarter. So you can see that these companies are trying new things. They had been on a subscription high for so long. There was a real subscription mania. Now consumers aren't just willing to keep subscribing and not looking at their bills. They're thinking harder and realizing that they may not actually need these things. All right, that's Wall Street Journal reporter Rachel Wolf with us. Rachel, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks so much for having me. And that's your Money Briefing. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal. how you can cancel your subscription from HBO Max, okay? And this is only if you purchase a subscription directly from HBO Max, not going from um, like a bundle package with a different platform. And you can cancel membership using your phone or computer, iPad, uh, tablet, or whatnot. So first thing is going to open up your browser. So I'll open up Safari on my iPhone here. It's a Safari browser. And then you just want to go down here and type in hbomax.com, okay? And click on go right there. Okay, now we just have to go ahead and sign in. Okay, so the top right hand side near the middle up to sign in. Let's tap on sign in right there. And then once you sign in, go ahead and click on your profile. Okay, now, now you can see the little V for my avatar up there. What I want to do is tap on that. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and tap on the settings icon up here. Okay, so I'll tap on the settings right there. And now you get this, all right? Now, if you're on a computer, once you sign into your profile to go to the settings, just go ahead and click on your avatar here. And then you just wanna go down to where it says settings, as if you're using a computer. So from here on the phone, under settings, we can see subscription here. Let's tap on subscription right there. And we can see my plan here. And on the bottom, I'm gonna tap on manage subscription. So I'm gonna tap on that right there. Give this one second to load here. And then once you're here, okay, under my account, if you scroll down a little bit, you can see cancel subscription right there, all right? So we can just go ahead and tap on that. And then go ahead and pick one of these while you want to cancel. And then go down here and put yes, cancel subscription. Pretty easy. Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Leon with No More Lines. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe. So in this video, I wanted to show everyone how to cancel your HBO Max subscription. Um, now, as I think a lot of people know, uh, The Matrix Resurrections is coming out tonight. Uh, it's supposed to be airing uh, on HBO Max at uh, 12 p.m. Uh, California time. So um, I'm, I'm going to probably be asleep at that time, but I'm going to definitely um, check it out in the morning. But uh, this is pretty much, uh, like I said, 
just a video showing you how to cancel your membership what's cool about hbo max is that they bill you uh every month but unlike some other subscription services that cancel the service as soon as you cancel your membership hbo max will let you keep your service until the billing date ends so basically if you subscribe on today your next billing date will be uh, january 21st of 2022 but if you cancel today you wouldn't get billed again and then it, basically after the 21st of january of next year you wouldn't be able to use your subscription so it's a way to um basically cancel your, your subscription and use it without having to worry about being billed um multiple times if you don't want to be so what you're going to do is you're going to log into your account and you're going to go to your profile and you're going to go to uh the subscription section and you're going to see it says manage subscription and then from here you're going to see where it says cancel subscription and you're going to just put in like what you want to put in there um i'm going to just put i finished the show i signed up for and i'm going to hit yes cancel subscription okay so now it says that your subscription will expire on january 21st 2022 you change your mind you can resume your subscription anytime uh, I actually signed up today. Uh, they billed me pretty much <laughs> like almost instantaneously whenever I signed up for it. But like I said, one of the best things about it is that uh, you'll be able to watch The Matrix and any uh, movie that's like a, a Warner Brother, Brothers movie. You'll be able to watch it on here. I hope you found this video helpful. Please be sure to like the video. If somebody asked me to describe the current state of Warner Brothers, or sorry, Warner Discovery, and their streaming service HBO Max, I'd say it's something akin to a clown car driving through a dumpster fire. So much has happened so quickly, and I knew during my last video there was no way I could fit it all in. The decline of Warner Bros didn't happen overnight, but I'm not gonna go through all the gritty details of how Bugs Bunny died, cause we could really go back decades if we wanted. Back in 2000, AOL bought out Time Warner for $162 billion. Now, eventually, AOL just kind of died and got sold off. Time Warner found itself in the middle of a controversial acquisition from AT&T, getting bought out for $85 billion in 2018. And then, AT&T split off Time Warner for only $43 billion just four years later, which is terrible. WB really went from one of the biggest names on the planet to a company worth significantly less than Kroger. A lot of this is because there's too much lead in the water. Maybe it's cocaine. AT&T acquired Time Warner for a lot of money and for really, really stupid reasons. It wasn't some grand 200 IQ play. It was just petty ego and a fundamental misunderstanding of what the corporation was capable of. The executives were nervous or excited seeing Comcast acquire NBC Universal, and they wanted to be cool too to get into the Hollywood game rather than the lame ass telecommunications business. But for some reason, they thought that they could leverage the mobile data they were collecting from customers on the AT&T network and somehow translate that to higher television ad rates. AT&T had no business in entertainment. To be honest, they don't really have business being in telecommunications either, but this acquisition was the main reason WB is in the position it is today. Just for some perspective, AT&T CEO at the time suggested cutting down Game of Thrones episodes to 20 minutes apiece to better suit the mobile market. This is how low the bar is. Anyway, AT&T got really caught up in its hopes for a massively successful streaming service, something to compete with that Disney Plus. And during the pandemic, the company viewed the situation as a huge opportunity, actually. Movie theaters are closed, people are at home. They decided, rather than delay upcoming blockbuster films for a few months or a year, that they would just throw them out on the new streaming service HBO Max. It was bold, brash, and turns out really 
really stupid. When you give people the option to watch any film that you make from home, it makes less financial sense for them to go to the movie theater. Now, a lot of people had questions of how this would possibly make money when it went down, but AT&T seemed to view it all as very sensible because people were going to be using AT&T services more. But yeah, AT&T had a grand vision of removing net neutrality and blocking off anybody from viewing content from Warner Brothers unless they had AT&T internet or mobile services. But even with these billions of dollars in investments, it still didn't work out in their favor because they're just that stupid. Most Warner Brothers movies proceeded to just lose hundreds of millions of dollars since nobody was paying to see them. Now, I would never complain about movies going straight to streaming day one. I prefer it, but AT&T's plan was not birthed from this charitable pro-consumer mindset. It was just an attempt to boost HBO Max's subscription numbers as quickly as possible and try and take advantage of net neutrality laws that were, well, didn't pan out. And you know what? If somehow they got to 300, 400 million subscribers and everybody everywhere was flocking to see Wonder Woman 1984, if net neutrality was removed and they could just force people to get AT&T to watch this, then maybe it might have worked out, but it didn't. After this brilliant plan failed, AT&T decided to spin off Warner Bros because surprise, surprise, it was losing a lot of money because of AT&T, but whatever. It wasn't just because of this particular scheme, it was also because AT&T is just kind of incompetent. They had a lot of debt and wanted to plop some of that on somebody else. So spinning off Warner Media, giving them the debt, selling it to Discovery, what could go wrong? What we're left with is Warner Brothers Discovery, the stuff dreams are made of. And it's been a, it's been a rough time. And, I, and that's the big reason people are here. That's what you want to you hear about. You want to hear about Batgirl in Scoob 2. The Christmas Scoob. Yeah, so if you didn't know, there was a Batgirl movie. It cost like $90 million to make, and it was supposed to release later this year on HBO Max. It was almost entirely shot, entering post-production, and it was cancelled. It's not coming out. It's dead. Now, if you didn't know, this was a movie that was coming out this year exclusively for HBO Max. I wouldn't blame you, because I didn't know it was a thing. I had no idea it was in production or existed until it was gone. But regardless, this caused a reaction. Now, I don't know how legitimate the backlash was to this cancellation. It could have been fueled by opportunistic pop culture journalists. But regardless, most people found it kind of weird that a movie that was mostly finished was just not coming out. Lost media, never to be seen. A final funeral showing for the cast and crew, and then bloop, deleted off the hard drives. So why'd they do this? Were they just being meanies? If a studio expects a film to bomb either due to the test audience reaction or the executives just don't like how it's turning out, they have the option to get rid of it and write off the production as a tax loss. The blame here, in my opinion, should go on the old regime that greenlit this in the first place. Obviously, it wasn't going to be profitable. There's no way a $90 million Batgirl HBO Max exclusive film was going to bring in $90 million from tens of millions of new subscribers to the service. It just wasn't going to happen. I mean, if people already like DC, they're probably subscribed to HBO Max. It's not like you're finding a whole new audience from this. Now, some have said, why don't they just release it in cinema and hope for the best from the box office? Well, one, they would have to spend like another 90 million bucks on marketing. And this film doesn't seem to mesh with the future plans of DC. There just seems to be a lot of reasons this particular movie was canceled. In terms of Scoob 2, reportedly it's almost finished and wouldn't cost too much to get it done. And while it's still being wrote off for tax purposes, it's possible the movie could be brought back in the future if W be wanted to pay back those deductions to the federal government? I don't think they will, but some people do. Other than that, we have the much publicized removal of HBO original movies, shows, Sesame Street episodes, and Cartoon Network stuff. 
This to me was a bit more bizarre than Batgirl because for one, they already own it. It's content that's been paid for, it's done, it exists, it's out. And at first glance, it seems entirely counterproductive to remove content from your streaming service that you made for your streaming service. But there's a reason for this. And again, it's money. Warner Discovery's lack of money. Residual payments for each of these shows, the cast and crew gets paid just because it's on the streaming service. Reports state that for all this content to remain on HBO Max, it would cost about $100 million a year in payouts, and the shows in question weren't being viewed frequently enough to justify that cost. Because, of course they weren't. $100 million a year? Doesn't that seem a bit excessive? My guess is that the old executives in their quest to make HBO Max take off paid exorbitant residual rates to a few creators making original content to try and get the service to blow up as quickly as possible. Future projects like the anticipated Batman the Animated Series revival seem to be getting shopped around to other streaming services, which is very embarrassing. Warner Discovery is at the point where it has to sell out to other companies to stay afloat. Now other incidents have occurred like layoffs and CNN Plus the CNN streaming service that was canceled within a month of its initial launch. Now, they also removed original movies and probably did other stuff that I forgot. But the best part about all this seems to be why they did it. All these actions, the layoffs, the cancellations, the removal of content, it was in service of a plan to save $3 billion. To cut costs. But by announcing all of these changes, it lost so much faith in the company that the market value dropped by $20 billion. Now sure, this isn't a one-to-one -one comparison market value in real, actual money, but still, you could make an argument that they lost $20 billion in an attempt to save three. Going forward, it's gonna be rough. Reportedly, Aquaman 2 and Shazam 2 were delayed because, amongst other reasons, WB doesn't have enough money to market the films this year. And yeah, that's not great. The entire fate of the corporation seems to be resting on the shoulders of one Dwayne The Rock, the Tooth Fairy, Jumanji Johnson. Look, it, it's not gonna get better. Remember how AT&T spent an insane, outrageous amount of money getting HBO Max off the ground? They did all of this, which destroyed these films just to get new subscribers to the service? Well, this was the future of Warner Brothers that everything was building towards. And the new management, which conveniently didn't come from the old Warner Brothers, but rather Discovery, has decided, eh, HBO Max has had its time in the sun. Now it's gotta be put down. That's right, after billions of dollars of debt and costs and losses, they just want to start over. Which is mind-blowing to me, because it's about the last thing you would want to do right now. The only stable part of your company, and you just say, eh, let, let's get rid of it? I think the reason they're doing this is corporate politics. I think it's as simple as guy comes from Discovery, he doesn't want to build off the achievements and service of the old guard. He's got to get his own project, make a new service that that's his trophy. One that combines HBO Max and Discovery Plus into a new, more expensive platform. Now, one might question, why not take the garbage on Discovery Plus that nobody is actually watching anyway and just shove it on HBO Max? Well, that would just make too much sense. HBO Max has all these subscribers. Discovery Plus has this many. Of course, it doesn't make sense to just get rid of HBO Max after all this work and effort, so it's gotta be Ego. They don't want Discovery content playing second fiddle, even though it absolutely is second fiddle. And by doing this, it might kill the whole company, who knows? Just the logistics of trying to start a new streaming service. You have no guarantee that in two years, people are going to want to go to a new thing. Who knows how many people just sign up to HBO Max for the big push, the big movies, and forgot to cancel their subscriptions. Moving over here is a massive risk that makes no sense. It boggles the mind that a corporation with so many notable IPs, so many ways to make money, could be collapsing like this. Am I saying that I could have done a better job? Yes. Yes, I am. And I think you could too. Any random person off the street would probably manage to keep this trash heap afloat a bit longer than these executives who are paid millions of dollars. So here's to you, stupid ass decisions. I'll see you in two years when you merge with Chipotle.
HBO Max, where they're getting a rebrand. And let's just say mm, it's not going over well with a lot of folks. Now, before we get into the reaction, here's what they are doing. HBO Max will soon just be called Max. Now, Warner Media merged with Discovery last year to form Warner Brothers Discovery. So now it'll be HBO, HGTV, Food Network, Cartoon Network, and TLC all under one umbrella. Now, people are split on this change. There are people upset about removing the iconic HBO name. There are others already planning to cancel their subscription. And then there are the streamers who think this is simply a brilliant idea. It is scheduled to maintain HBO Max's current price of almost 16 bucks a month and launches on May 23rd.